AP Chem Unit 2.1, Types of Chemical Bonds. Electronegativity is going to be the ability for an atom in a molecule to attract any shared electrons to itself. And chemical bonds are the attraction between the nucleus of one atom and the electron of another. And this is going to form our types of bonds. So first type of bond is going to be an ionic bond. This is going to involve a full transfer of ownership of an electron, uh, typically from a metal to a non-metal. Covalent bonds, on the other hand, involve a sharing of custody of that electron. This is typically between two non-metals. There are types of covalent bonds. The first is a nonpolar bond, and nonpolar bonds involve the electrons being shared equally between the members of uh, the chemical bond versus polar bonds where we have an uneven distribution of those electrons where they uh, spend a majority of time with one atom over the other due to a difference in electronegativity. Metallic bonds aren't uh, true bonds. Instead, uh, the electrons are not associated with a single atom or molecule. They are delocalized in what is known as a sea of electrons. And so um, they're not uh, bonds in terms that covalent bonds and ionic bonds are bonds, um, but they're just kind of shared equally amongst uh, all of the metals present. And again, um, that collective of electrons are called the sea of electrons. Um, I like to liken this to the communist dream uh, where uh, everybody gets equal access to the electrons. They get exactly what they need and everybody shares evenly. Nobody takes uh, any more than exactly what they need and everybody gets equal access. Uh, and this is why uh, metals are conductive because those electrons are delocalized and um, are shared amongst all of the metals, all of the nuclei of the metals within that substance, uh, electrons are able to flow um, in one direction or another uh, very easily, and that is what conductivity is. So bond polarity is going to be determined by the difference in electronegativity of the two elements within that bond. Um, atoms that have a high electronegativity um, will develop a partial negative charge. It's important uh, that you know that I didn't just like fail to draw an eight. Instead, uh, this is what it looks like. It looks like a uh, like an eight where you kind of like failed to complete that last portion. That is a lowercase delta, um, but it denotes a partial charge. And so um, atoms with a high electronegativity tend to develop uh, having a partial negative charge, which again is denoted by that uh, lowercase delta. Whereas uh, atoms with a low electronegativity will develop a partial positive charge, and that again will be signified by the lowercase delta and a positive sign instead. Uh, if we are dealing with uh, like showing um, where those electrons are living within a compound, we might use something called a dipole arrow. Uh, dipole arrows are going to point toward the more electronegative atom. So you can see that this is the pull. This is where the electrons are being pulled. This is where they are flowing toward um, using those dipole arrows. So in this example, I see um, which of the following claims about the potassium chlorine, or sorry, phosphorus chlorine bond is true. The electronegativity of phosphorus is 2.5 and chlorine is 3.0. So um, I am then going to go ahead and look at the different, uh, different options here. But I can see that phosphorus has a lower electronegativity than chlorine. And so based off of my uh, polarity notes, I know that um, it is more likely to have a positive, uh, partial positive charge than my chlorine would. Um, looking at my uh, answer choices, I see uh, the partial positive charge is on phosphorus. That sounds good. The dipole arrow points toward phosphorus. This is not going to be correct. Again, my dipole arrow would point toward the more electronegative 
um, element, which would be chlorine in this case. There's a sea of electrons between phosphorus and chlorine. The sea of electrons would only be present if this was a metallic bond. Phosphorus and chlorine are both non-metals, so that does not meet the criteria for a metallic bond. I would need only metals to be present, so no. And then D, um, the bond between phosphorus and chlorine is nonpolar. My uh, bond differential uh, between uh, phosphorus and chlorine is 0 0.5, which does put me in the polar uh, category here. So I would be able to draw um, my uh, bond here where I would have a partial positive on phosphorus, partial negative on chlorine, my dipole arrow uh, pointing toward chlorine. And again, that all because uh, chlorine has a higher electronegativity than phosphorus does.